Earthworm's been around for 25 years. It was actually founded by a gentleman by the name of Bill Swales, who unfortunately passed away um, a little over a year ago. Um, he was a wildlife photographer, was his passion, and after he threw away a couple of truck campers because he was too cold and too wet while filming in Alaska, decided to set about and create the perfect expedition vehicle that would allow him to get out in the wild, do what he did best, and still be comfortable at the same time. His first vehicle rolled out of the factory in 1999. Since that time, we have over 350 vehicles on the road. Only two have ever been taken out of service. Um, currently, we're producing about 40 vehicles a year. Uh, and I was fortunate to join the company about two years ago when Bill hired me based on my manufacturing experience uh, to be the president and COO. So you have a unique background that, that I would think will be is super well suited to Earth Rover. So tell us a little bit about your own personal background. I appreciate you asking about me, but what it's really about here at Earth Roamer are the 114 of the finest Colorado craftsmen that you're ever going to find. Um, we have an extremely proud workforce. If you look in the parking lot, you'll see a lot of pickup trucks with rooftop tents and kayaks on board. Um, you walk throughout our factory, you're going to see the pride they take regardless of what job they're doing for us. We have outstanding diesel mechanics, outstanding chassis technicians. Our composite technicians come out of both the wind energy uh, industries here in Colorado, as well as the aerospace industries. And then really our craftsmanship really shines through in our woodworking team. Every piece of wood you see out there on that factory floor has been hand cut, hand rubbed, hand finished before it's installed in the vehicles for you. Hi folks, I'm Meath with Two Guys Are Riding. Today, Rob and I are here uh, just north of Denver, Colorado, and we're here at none other than Earth Roamer. Now, if you haven't checked out our two videos of the Earth Roamer uh, SX and the Earth Roamer LTI, click the links above. But we're here today to talk about what goes into making an Earth Roamer. The quality, the craftsmanship, the design, the testing. It's an incredible place, and we're here with Scott. Scott, you're the CEO of Earth Roamer. Thank you for having us here today. Thrilled to be here. I have the world's greatest job. Welcome to Earth Roamer, the world's premier manufacturer of luxury expedition vehicles. And you're going to see just why when we take the factory tour. So, I know we like looking at this beautiful beast behind us, but why don't we step into the factory and take you on a tour? Looking forward to it. All right. All right, so we are now inside the factory and we're with Zach. Zach, thanks for taking your time to Absolutely. help us go through the factory. Of course. Now, you have an interesting job here at the company. So tell us a little bit about that. So I'm the customer experience manager for Earth Roamer. So my job is once a customer takes delivery of the truck, helping them understand the full Earth Roamer lifestyle, what you can do with the truck, where you can take it, uh, best practices and uses. Uh, I also do all of the deliveries for customers with uh, all the training. So when you take delivery of an Earth Roamer, there's a lot to learn. Okay. Um, and with all of that to learn, we want to set you up for success and get you ready for big adventures, whether you're going straight to Alaska or down to Baja or wherever you want to be going. And then we also uh, do guided trips as well, if you don't want to do that on your own. So we will do uh, our Earth Roamer Adventures program and our owner's rallies, where we put together a calendar every year of different places that we are traveling. And if you'd like to come with us and a group of other owners, uh, we all go and say, explore Moab together or the Grand Tetons or Pacific Northwest. Maybe we'll do Alaska with you, something along those lines. So you get to be with a group, you get to experience everything, and you also kind of get to learn from some of the employees here on the skills you might need to use the truck most effectively. Uh, so if I understand right, you deliver the vehicle? To the owner? Most of the time we have owners who choose to come to the factory. They want to see the factory. They want sure. to see where their truck I was understand built. understand that. And, um, but there's a, there's a long training day process um, just to make sure you're ready for night one. And that is all included? Oh, yeah, and, absolutely. And, and the price, which, which is outstanding customer service, is, is my point. Well, we like to say that we live vicariously through our customers. Um, we like to see the trucks on the road because we're all aspiring Earth Roamer owners ourselves, everybody who works here. So uh, what, we, what we enjoy most is setting people up for success and giving them the opportunity to go out and live the adventures that we would love to do in an Earth Roamer as well and hopefully will one day. We have an annual owner's rally every year where we bring everybody back together 
Um, and it's just like a big family reunion. So we'll go out way off the grid and spend a couple days all catching up and seeing what people have been doing throughout the last year and all the adventures they've been taking. And the fun part about it is too, we'll bring our side of the Earth Roamer family, which is the employees, to the owner's rally and we'll, be, we'll give people the opportunity to meet the, the people who actually built their truck. So you wanna meet the people on the floor. It's really fun when customers get the opportunity to say, or meet somebody who says, hi, I'm the guy who built your shell. I'm the one who did your woodwork. I'm the one who installed or fabricated your bumpers. And those people sitting around the campfire all kind of talking about adventures together is a lot of fun. All right, so we're here in the engineering department of Earth Roma, and we're here with Ty, and we're here with Ryan. Thanks for spending a little time with us today. Excellent. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. yeah I, I just think it's incredible that Earth Roma has its own engineers. I mean, it makes complete sense because everything, most of the stuff is in-house built. Someone's got to design it, right? So, um, Ryan, why don't you just run us through a little bit about what the engineering department all does? So, right now we have about six engineers. Um, we engineer everything from the chassis, metal fabrication, composites, wood, electrical, plumbing. Everything comes from the engineering department. So, Man. the entire Earth Roamer product comes from the engineering department. You know, the, 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 the composite shell, it's all carbon fiber. So, you know, you guys have to have some safety specs on it. So, Talk to us a little bit about that. 100%. So when we go to design a camper shell, uh, we come up with the OML, the outside model lines, what we want it to look like. From there, we go ahead and take an initial analysis and go ahead and say, you know, establish what is called a laminate schedule, which is, you know, the layers of carbon and your core callouts. We then go ahead and outsource it to a company called Wartech and have it, you know, finite element analyzed. Uh, they analyze it at a 5G drop and about a 1.5G side load. From there, we go ahead and identify any weak points in the shell, readjust the laminate schedule, go ahead and add uh, mulligans and other things like that, um, which is big pieces of steel or aluminum inside of the camper shells to deal with those stress concentrations. Then have it FE8 again. And, you know, so far we haven't ever had to have one FE8 more than twice. Um, before we go ahead and take care of all those stress analysis, and then we're ready to go ahead and order core kits and begin to build that. What what brought you to Earth Roamer? What was the attraction? What was the draw? No, 100%. I was, you know, it was about three years out of school uh, working construction. Uh, one night came home after being cold and miserable all day and uh, saw a job description uh, to come to Earth Roamer, and I thought it would be the great best fit ever. I mean, I used to build big toys for a living. I have no complaints whatsoever. <laughs> I, I I envy you. Yeah, no, I'm saying. <laughs> Ryan, what about you? Um, so I went to school down in, uh, in Arizona, but I grew up here just south of right. Thornton, Colorado. Um, I've been driving past Earth Roamer my whole life. And once I graduated, I came home to visit my family and spend some time, uh, not as a student anymore, and right. uh, saw that Earth Roamer was hiring, came down, applied, and Ty actually hired me on. Um, very passionate about what we do here, um, the whole Overland community. Very, uh, very interesting to me. So, uh, Ty, Ryan, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. We sure appreciate it. Of course, thank you. All right. So, show us how they're made. Sounds good. So we're starting out here in the uh, the chassis department. Now, our chassis department are the guys who will take a factory Ford F550 or a Chevy 6500 for our new model line uh, and tear it all the way down from what you could buy off of the dealership lot. Um, and tear it down to bare frame rails, tear out the entire interior, cut the back wall out of the cab, and then kind of build up from there. Um, so we can actually talk to uh, one of our chassis technicians about exactly everything that they do here and, uh, and, and how it works and the process that they do to make this ready to become the foundation of an earth rubber. All right, well, let's do that. Sounds good. All right, so Mark, nice to meet you. Thank you. So this is where the magic starts. This is it. So tell us what you do. Um, so we take the factory chassis, we strip it down, um, pull wheels and tires off, all the factory suspension. Uh, we cut this big hole in the back wall, install a substructure to reinforce it, um, which will become the pass-through later on. Uh, from there, we cut the fenders out to clearance the 43-inch tires. There's a lot of chopping and cutting up there okay. um, that goes on. Um, we do... The camper mounts will go on here, so we drill all the holes for the front camper mounts. And then from there, on the frame-wise, we extend the frame 40 inches, 
Um, we install a pivot mount to allow the camper to pivot independently um, from the chassis because the chassis will actually have is pretty rigid um, and the suspension needs to work underneath the chassis so we don't have fractures and stuff in the camper. So the, the the actual camper can swivel independently Correct. of the frame. Yep. Um, so all that moves underneath it. Okay. Um, of course, is the reinforcement piece. Yeah, so the there's actually length. a 3-8 plate which is on the ground over there, which will be the reinforcement that will go over top of here. Okay. Um, and then this will be the link mount um, for the parallel floor link. And, uh, yeah, so it's all reinforced, all welded, super beefy. Um, and yet you maintain the Ford factory warranty on correct. the, the drive shaft, transmission, Yep, so engine. we don't touch any of the drive shafts, transmission, axle housings. Um, they come with 48 gears to match the tires to spin them real nicely. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all factory warranty. So. Um, now, this one is in process, right? But you've okay. got one behind us that is actually almost ready to roll to the next stage. Yep, so that so one's ready go, to move on. Let's step over there and take a look take at it. that. So this is finished. Um, here's the pivot mount I was talking about. And All right here. So the camper will sit on top of here. Okay. And this is actually, you can see how it's not level right now. Right. Um, that moves with the camper. Um, so the camper does have some flex in the body between there and here, but obviously such a long distance it's not flexing as much right. as But it, it gives it enough that it's not stressing. Correct. And then you of course run all the hoses, get everything ready. Yep, so this is the air ride manifold and the air tank. This is what controls the air suspension, but also we have a air chuck, one on each side, one on the front, and one on the back. So you can plumb into those, use air tools to fill up tires, whatever you need. And that, and it comes with a, about a 25 foot hose, I believe. Um, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of the things that surprised me uh, after seeing them at SEMA was exactly how stripped out the interior gets. Now this one's had some of the interior put back in, right. but they're stripped right down to bare metal. Yep. We uh, take everything out of the interior. Um, some of the internal trim pieces you can see that are missing around the vents and all that, those all get um, carbon fiber wrapped to match, um, okay. just to add that little bit extra touch in there. Well, you know, Mark, let me just ask you one more question. You know, what what made you, or what's your background before you came to Earth Roll? <laughs> um, so I actually have a geography degree. Okay. And uh, so right out of college, um, I made the mistake of not taking the computer classes that I needed to like really go into a field and use that degree. Um, but my buddy started at Floral Parts before I graduated college. I had already built a few cars and trucks and stuff and done okay. a lot of work. So I started working at Floral Parts right out of college and then moved to Denver in 2020, which was a great year to move. Yeah, no kidding. Um, and yeah, started looking for a job, found Earth Roamer. I was like, there's no way they're gonna hire me. That's too high end. And here I am and I've been I produced about 90 chassis at this point. But you had so. you you had that, I would say one key component. Whereas you had that love for cars. Yep. And yep. you built. Yeah. So it you started from my forerunner, and I just started building, and then continued with it. And now I'm doing some crazy stuff. So it, it is amazing <laughs> stuff the way these are built. Mark, thank yep. you so much for thank taking you. us John tour this part. We're going to head to the next part of the factory. Right. Sounds good. Thanks. All right, so uh, Zach, you know, we're back in another section of the factory, um, and this is where we're going to, uh, again, see the craftsmanship, the quality uh, that goes into to making the inside of the Earth Roamer. What particular area are we at? So this is our wood department, and this is actually one of the largest departments of Earth Roamer. Um, okay. Every single piece inside of an Earth Roamer that you see that is the beautiful finished wood has been either hand cut, hand rubbed, uh, polished, um, fitted, everything all here. And, uh, and it's really amazing because we're able to work with a lot of different species of wood based on the customer's request. Um, and we have a lot of very dedicated, skilled craftsmen here who, who put a lot of pride and a lot of energy into such a beautiful piece of, of wood in the truck. Uh, that you will just see continuing to flow throughout the entire interior.
and you know, and we noticed that when we were at SEMA, just the fit and the finish mm. of, of the end product is is, is astounding. Yeah, uh, that you don't see in other campers. I mean, this is craftsmanship. We really like to say that um, it's it's closer to like a yacht oh, finish, yeah. uh, fit and finish where we put a lot of energy into trying to make sure all of our gaps look perfect, not only on delivery day, but 10, 15 years later. And so there's a lot of engineering behind uh, the beautiful craftsmanship as well that allows for everything to work the same way to make all of our latches and our gaps and our doors and everything work the same way and look the same way 10, 15, 20 years down the line as it did on delivery day so that it kind of feels like a, a timeless product. Um, wherever you're gonna be taking your truck, you want that wood to still um, look and work the same way and not have too many issues with, with humidity and with temperature changes. So we will stick to known materials that we have kind of perfected like a recipe throughout the years. Right, which, which again speaks to the, to, to the quality of the vehicle. Not only the day you buy it, but you know, 10, 20, 30 years down the road. Absolutely, yeah, we really want these to, to last a lifetime and then some. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. So, Alex, uh, tell us where you know we're in the the department where everything, anything that's wood, in the earth realm where it is made. So, talk to us about the you know the craftsman you've got working, uh, and you know the, the quality, uh, and how you put things together. So it all starts off with our hardwood lumber that we get back there in, in the back of our shop. I um, mean, we just get it raw, and we get each one of our technicians to mill out their own lumber. And from there, they start to produce uh, these projects, uh, whether it's the cabinetry, um, it's the underbunk, it's the, the bunk cabinets themselves. Um, we have dedicated craftsmen in each of these positions that play a role in each portion of the truck build, whether it's from building it outside or getting it installed inside the truck. Um, everyone has a unique position here, very dedicated to what we do. And we have some of the finest woodworkers here that keep that top quality on some of the lumber. So we don't use anything that doesn't meet our standard. Yeah, and you know, in, in looking at the wood that goes in, you know, to the vehicle, I mean, even like for the drawer covers. Correct. You'll use the same wood, the same piece of wood, to keep the grain going in the same direction. Absolutely. And it's exactly the same. I mean, just, just those little things. Earlier, you were doing a little fit and finish. Correct. On one, just to make sure that, for you know, the the the, the drawers and the everything, the frame stayed straight correct so yeah uh, you do a lot of different things in the absolutely yeah so i play a lot of hats here so basically wherever i'm needed in my wood department i tend to fill in um so whether it's fitting drawers installing ceiling trim or finishing up at the back end uh, adjusting all of our hardware and things like that um that's kind of where i fit in for a lot of this okay Let's let's take a look, walk back here, because you have got a, a CNC machine. Absolutely. That does some of your cutting, and Correct. you've actually got your uh, your raw supply of wood. Absolutely. Yes. So back here is our technician, Eric, and he actually receives all the plywood. He stocks it over here, and he brings it to the CNC, and he runs off of a schedule where he cuts everything for all the cabinets, uh, sofa tops, um, butcher blocks. Uh, basically everything that gets CNC runs through him and this is where also a lot of it does start too on the on the plywood side and then he's the one that makes sure that the piece of wood that's selected is is also absolutely because I mean you, you you can even request things like I want a uh, pine that doesn't have knots I Correct. want pine that has some knots Correct. I want pine that has a lot of them you know what I mean absolutely yeah you can really customize it um, and then uh, of course, you know, you have all the bins for the different builds. Yes, correct. So these are the bins that he fills with all the parts that are necessary for the cabinetry. And from here, our, our technicians come and grab everything that they need. So everything is labeled per cart, per truck. Um, so it's easy to find and, and access. And not every part, I mean, not a, the interesting thing is not every bin is the same because the customer can customize what they want in the vehicle. Correct, correct. So you may delete something and add, uh, I want a couch here instead of a countertop. Correct. So you can have a little bit different kinds of wood here. Yes, correct. So Alex, tell us a little bit about how you came to work for Earth Rome. What's, what's your background? With my background, it is carpentry. So I started off doing drafting engineering for a, a millwork company and I kind of worked my way through that. Um, I realized that I did like installing, so I kind of got out on the field for a little while. 
Um, and eventually I saw a job opening here and this was kind of one of my dream jobs because I went to high school down the street. So, so you'd already seen her, you already heard about it. Yes. And so when I finally had the credentials to come and work for Earthrome, I, I applied and they were happily uh, with open arms taking me in. And Well, I think, I think they're very lucky to have gotten you. I appreciate that. Alex, thank you for your time. Oh, absolutely. For sharing your knowledge with us. We appreciate it. No, thank you. All right. Let's step up to the next area. All right, so we just went through, you know, the the, crap, the, the wood department where they're made, the, well, they're making the wood parts, right? But this is the finishing department. I Correct, yeah. So, so this is the wood finishing department. So after the pieces have been cut from the raw materials, they've been uh, bench built, maybe they've been pre-fit into the actual assembly, the trucks themselves. Okay. They will come to the finishing department here where also depending on the species of wood that the customer chooses, they can also pick different colors for stains. They can okay. pick different uh, finishes. They can even pick whether or not they will distress the pieces to make it look maybe like a reclaimed barn okay. wood or something like okay. that. So, and we can talk to Tim, our uh, wood department manager, a little bit more about that um, because he has all of the knowledge about all the different pieces we see in here going through the finishing process. Excellent. Hi. Tim, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, you know, customers have a lot of opportunities to customize what the woodwork that goes into their earth roamer. Oh, absolutely. And so tell us about some of the some of the things that they can do. Um, basically, we have a whole, as you can see in the background here, we have a whole selection of colors. Um, but there are more than those. Those are just some current ones. Okay. Uh, but they basically, they with work with the sales team, they pick the uh, color of the uh, wood they want. They pick between uh, white oak, alder, maple, uh, hardwoods. Um, you just saw the uh, wood department. So basically everything comes out of the wood department, has been thoroughly inspected for any flaws, any cross grain scratching. Comes over here to the finish department where they'll do another brief inspection. Uh, just make sure there's no flaws. Um, they will then hand stained, hand, we hand wipe all of our stains. Really? And then um, the top, there's three uh, top coats of a conversion varnish, super durable finish. Man, so I mean, I mean it's just impressive and that they're doing a quality check before it leaves. You're doing another quality check when it gets here. And then each piece is, of course, done according to how. Absolutely, each piece is hand finished by hand. Um, actually, our checks are so uh, in depth that even one of the options we offer is hand distressing, where we basically nick the cabinets, beat them up a little bit. Even those cabinets, when they come over here, come over here with a full inspection so that they could be finished as is. Uh, we, we do not let anything come over here that has any kind of flaw, even if it's getting distressed. Uh, so then they will also, they will use a selection of tools to do hand distressing, uh, simulate some scratches, some gouging, some dents, uh, okay. whatnot. So tell us a little bit about your background and how, and how you came to Earth Road. Um, so actually, I just uh, I just uh, had my sixth year uh, anniversary. Um, I started in the wood shop uh, building cabinets, yeah, actually in phase three. Um, actually, I worked with Zach in uh, phase three for a while. Um, and then uh, I got to the point where I could do my schedule in, in a real short period of time. Started working on the HD project, um, then took over the wood shop in HD. Uh, then was appointed lead for uh, LTI-1 um, to bring that online. Um, then worked my way, just worked my way through all the, I, I've, I've managed in some shape or form quite a few of the departments here. Uh, so basically the, I managed the wood shop, uh, finish department, CNC, upholstery shop, and uh, I now manage, or a production manager for SX product line. All right, well, it's always helpful, I think, to have somebody who has that sort of a general knowledge, yep. uh, you know, in, in an area where that they, they know where it's coming from, what it takes, and where it's going, yep. uh, and what it's going to look like at the end. Yep, yeah, at, at the end of the day, basically my background is custom cabinetry and finishing. Uh, so that, that's kind of my bread and butter. Uh, so, yeah, so the basically I these, you got these departments, and then uh, basically all the departments I run, other than the SX, we classify under fit and finish. So it's, it's the stuff you see the second you walk in the truck. Okay. And you know, before you came to Earth Roma, did you work in woodworking or finish? Yep, I actually had my uh, had my own uh, custom cabinet and countertop shop back in Michigan. Really? Um, okay. So, so 
This was something you studied for. I actually learned your own business. Yeah, built long before you came here. Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've, I've been a woodworker pretty much all my life. I mean, you know, the point I'm getting to again is that quality and that craftsmanship that goes into that earth roamer. Absolutely. Again, you know, when when you look at any other vehicle that you would purchase uh, or a camper, you're you're paying for that customization. You're paying for those years of experience. And so you, we can see here, you know, the, working in the wood finishing department, right? You you had your own business in cabinetry building, which is it's almost exactly what you're doing here. A few extra pieces, but the same concept. So it just lends to the to the whole idea of um, the value that you're getting when you buy an earth roll. Oh, absolutely. That's one of the things that people don't really see. They, at the end of the day, they see the, the, the sticker price and they don't realize what goes in. I mean, just between the wood shop and the finish department is hours and hours that goes into every single cabinet because we don't, uh, I mean, one of the things we don't do is we don't caulk gaps and we don't use trims to hide gaps. Everything in the truck has to fit like it's supposed to, no exceptions. That is that is the quality our customers expect and this that is the quality we, we give them. Which leads back to the, what we talked about earlier, Zach, and that is that, um, you know, it, it, you, you use specific woods so the, uh, for the longevity of the vehicle. So 10 years down the road with humidity and high temperatures, extreme temperatures, you don't have warping. You don't have separation. But, right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tim, for spending your time with us. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. All right, Zach, on to the next location. <laughs> All right, so we, we stepped to the next department here. Tell us where we're at, Zach. So this is the Earthromer Metal Shop. So we start here in the machining area where Steve, our machinist, is running the three different uh, uh, machines in here to produce a lot of the different parts that go into an Earthromer. Um, we, we keep talking about quality. Uh, and one of the nice things is that when we are building in-house and when we can do our machining in-house, we have a lot of control over uh, making sure that products are uniform, but also making sure that we have access to new developing products, uh, new things that we need to build either custom or evolving throughout our technology. Um, now, after Steve has built a lot of the different raw good materials uh, into parts in the machine shop, he will also be transitioning a lot of those over to our fabrication shop on the other side of the wall here where we have three different welders who are going to be assembling a lot of the different parts, like bumpers and swing out boxes, exterior kitchens, the frame extensions we saw in the chassis department, the reinforcements for that, all of the different uh, metal parts that come together to make an earth roamer as special as it is and as rugged as it is. You know, I, it, it, it's starting to strike me as, as we're going through here that there is so much earth roamer in earth roamer. Yes. You manufacture a lot of your own stuff. Yes. So there are a lot of parts throughout the build where I think there is this, um, this misconception that we are buying off the shelf parts in order to just assemble a camper when that couldn't really be further from the truth. Um, whether it be again, our bumpers here in the metal shop, frame extensions and all of the fabrication fabricated pieces for the chassis, to in our composite shop building all of our own fender flares, all of our own fuel cups, all of our own um, shower walls and basins. Uh, if it's a composite- Even piece, the rear seats in the truck. Yeah, our upholstery shop, we'll see that um, we're doing all of our own in-house upholstery so that we can retain the quality and we can control the quality and the supply chain uh, so that everything comes out as a earth roamer quality uh, product and we can always maintain our standard. Well, that being said, let's take a look at the uh, the next part of the uh, metal shop. Yeah, let's go check out what the welders are working on. All right. All right. All right so we are where? So this is our other side of the metal shop. Okay. This is going to be where our, the welders are doing all the fabricating of pieces um, that we'll see turning into kind of the hard goods of an earth roamer. So. Here they'll build, they'll be building rear bumpers, front bumpers, the frame extensions, the frame reinforcements, and all the chassis components, um, as well as a lot of the small goods. So if we're seeing little things like brackets or uh, little framework okay. in different ways throughout the truck, 
they'll be building that here and then supplying that to our assembly hall to do final installation of those components. Right. Which again, I mean that you just mentioned so many different components mm -hmm. that go on and what you when you look at the truck you just kind of see the overall thing, but all of these things yeah. are hand built. One of it's one of the questions we get a lot from people is that's such a cool front bumper. Who makes it and where can I get one? Huh. And we always remind them these are earth roamer parts meant specifically for earth roamer. So love to give you a bumper if you buy an earth roamer. There you go. You just have to buy an earth roamer to get one. Sounds good to me. All right. So uh, can we talk to one of the, the welders that's here? Yeah. So we can talk to John here. John does a lot of our MIG welding and builds steel, our steel parts. Like right now, it looks like he's working on a, uh, a rear bumper oh, build. All right. John? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming in. All right, so John, tell us a little bit about how you came to work for Earthroamer. Well, just like anybody else, just a interesting, crazy journey, trying different things out, seeing what shoes fit, quote unquote. And, uh, you know, I've always been a hands-on person, played with Legos as a kid. And, uh, you know, kind of in my adult life, I decided I didn't want to sit in front of a computer all day and send emails to people. So went back to school and... Here I am. Learned how to weld at a later age. Yep. Man, I, I, I got to tell you, we've been admiring this work because, I mean, it, it takes a, a high level of skill to get something welded together to look beautiful. Yep. Uh, you know, this is one of the rear bumpers. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and you put all everything together. That is I mean, this This comes in sections and pieces. Yep. So this is one piece, the top's another. So, I, I mean... How long does it take you to make a, a bumper? Um, so it, it, I've gotten to the point now where it's about nine hours. Holy or so. schmoly. So when you look at an earth roamer and you see that rear bumper, that's nine person hours. Yep. <laughs> Just, that, that, that's not painting it. That's not adding all the fixtures. That's not mounting it. That's just, just building it. Just sticking it together. Man, <laughs> so it, it's, it, it's, it's not something that's just slapped together. It's something that's very carefully put. I mean, it looks beautiful. I mean, and when you see them on the truck, it's no wonder why people say, could I, could I buy one of those bumpers separately? Yeah. <laughs> and you can always buy it for the price of an earth roamer. Exactly. I mean, I mean, it is just amazing, John. I mean, I just, I, I, I got to hand it to you <laughs> for your ability to weld. I mean, and make it look like it was never, like yeah. it was born that way. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we take a lot of pride in what we do in, in the metal shop and everybody else here can say the same thing. So, you know, every anytime a bumper or a, a rear box, anything that comes out of the metal shop, you know, we put our heart and soul into it. You know, this is, this is what we do for a living and we're proud of what we do and um, it really shows. As you have all this craftsmanship going into so many details. We got people like you and the others that are working here that have so much de uh, so much experience and spend so much time doing it. I mean, it's it's like a piece of art. Yeah, very much so. So, John, thank you so much for spending Good your time with us today. We sure appreciate it. <laughs> so, tell us what we have here. So now we're in our upholstery department. So Earth Roamer Upholstery does all of the soft goods in the truck. Um, that may be couch cushions, that may be curtains, that's the upholstered pass-through that is the threshold between the cab and the camper. Okay. Um, and then there's even a lot of parts that some people may not think about. Like for instance, uh, we have to build rear captain's chairs uh, because you can't order a pickup truck with uh, without a bench rear seat with captain's chairs. So we wanna build it so that we give that OEM feel, that high quality, um, and so we will do those kind of things all in-house. And a lot of this is still in the customizable portion of the build for the customer. All right, Oscar, so walk us through the process in here. Well, there's a lot of different processes going on with, in, with uh Okay, in so let's talk about, you know, if it's a, like a cushion. Okay. A cushion, uh, well, we start with leather, obviously. Okay. Um, we have like a certain, uh, there's different leathers that the customer can choose. This is just one um, type of leather that is for an upcoming truck. So um, when the customer gets with sales, they go through all of the different um, leather options that they can get. Okay. Some customers will do fabric as well, okay. some fabric. So 
we'll get the leather and then we will, um, depending on what the, uh, what the uh, truck layout is, mm -hmm. then we'll have different um, different cushion options. Okay. So if it's a Breckenridge, then we have the patterns for Breckenridge and we'll cut those out. We have um, pattern templates in the back. Okay. We cut that out um, and then we all sew them by hands, all hand cut, hand sewn. Hand cut and hand sewn. Hand sewn. So and then like over here, would you would cut this is where you would cut the leather. Yeah, I could take you in the back and show you some okay. of uh, our patterns that we use. What kind? This you is the Aspen, which is just the one solid cushion. Okay. Uh, then you have the dinette, and that's the Breckenridge there where you have uh, two cushions, and then you have the dinette. So there's like f five or six floor, floor plans from, uh, okay. I believe, that they can kind of choose different options, some with dinette, some without. Right, but, right. So. you know, just, just those little, you know, little items that you consider. Yes. When you're, you know, you're not just like, okay, it's another no, cushion. We're gonna definitely cushion. not. You're like, hmm, what color is the outside? What color is this? Yes. What color is that? Yeah. And can I find something that's gonna blend with that? Absolutely. So. Yeah, we it, have the different uh, breather material here that goes on the back of the cushions. So we have a really wide ranging selection. palette that we can use to, you know, bring out the best in the customer's truck. Let's talk about seats a little bit because yeah. in the back of the truck, there's a bench seat when it comes. Yes. And it, that gets taken out and you put yep. in these captain's chairs. Yes, so sir. I don't know how you did this in like the five minutes we were gone, <laughs> but uh, just walk us through the process. Yeah, no, it's a very involved process. Um, Kaylana, she's working on our, our seats right now. She's very talented. Uh, member of our team and uh so yeah we start with everything comes in a basically in a bundle um everything separate we have to saw the the um the the uh, feet to accommodate the uh the the uh, bottoms that are going to be installed okay okay on the on the racks oh, um, boy. all Mr. of these pieces here we cut by hand uh, the, the plastic pieces we install by hand. Everything here that you see, it's all done by hand. It's a, it's a very intensive manual process, but... Um, it's gotta yeah. be, now, is it sewn here? Is no, it? no, okay. these, these, uh, these covers come to us, Okay. but all of the insides are all done by uh, us. All yeah, it's yeah, all like, when it's we were all here, it would, all it was here yeah. was a metal plate. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. that's, just, that's just amazing. Yeah. Okay, and, and the metal part isn't typically what upholstery does, like oh, as as a, as an industry or as a craft. But here at Earth Roamer, of course, everything's all inclusive. So sometimes we uh, have to extend our knowledge base and skill base to like fit what needs to be done. Yeah. So and obviously you've yeah. got a couple different sewing stations up yep. here. Yes, and then uh, part of your foam trimming. For, yes. For so the these, yeah, these are for the pass-through plugs. So these are the oh, plugs sure. that will um, that will separate the cab from the camper. Yep. Yep. So if you're in the camper, you don't have to heat the whole truck. You just heat the camper part. So we have these plugs to, you know, keep uh, keep it climate controlled. So, Oscar, what what was your uh, background before coming to uh, Earth Rover? Done a few things. I've but I've basically worked leather for about 20 years. Wow. Yeah, I had my own uh, shop in Los Angeles where okay. I'm originally from. Okay. So uh, everything done by hand as well there. So I kind of come from that, you know, hand handmade background. Background which was a nice fit here. Definitely. Obviously definitely. lots of talent here. I oh my mean, God, a is, lot of talent. Everyone here that works in this apartment is extremely talented. And everyone brings certain strengths and knowledge from their background. Around. So we all kind of borrow from each other and make this department the best that it can be and that I think it shows in the product that we put out. It absolutely does show, but yeah. most people don't realize <laughs> how much work yeah. and effort it's a lot went of work. into creating It's a lot those of work, pieces. a lot of talent. It's just amazing. A lot of, um, you really have to be extremely precise. When you put a hole in leather, it, there's no it. undoing it. It isn't like, you know, uh, uh, garments where you can take take something out and do it. Once that hole's in the leather, that's it. That's so it. It has to look good, it has to be precise. So that precision is something that everyone in the team brings. Oscar, thank you so much Great. for spending your time with thank us. You. We sure appreciate it. Thank you, sir. All right.
And we're off to the next station. All right, so uh, what stage are we at? So this is actually the assembly portion of the process, the, where we're actually putting all the different pieces we've seen together okay. into the actual camper, and this is actually where the camper will become an earth roamer. Okay. So we can start over here. This is kind of going to be uh, where assembly starts with an empty shell. All right. And when we go look inside, we'll see that this shell, which has just come out of our composites shop on site, has already had the entire one piece carbon fiber body built. And we've also sprayed this one with our X-Guard material, which is that um, bed liner style finish on the outside. And inside we see um, the empty shell that is getting ready to get its whole stringer network and all of the, the bones inside essentially that, that put together what we need uh, behind our walls and our cabinetry as well as pre-running all of our electrical, our plumbing, all the things that get hidden behind the scenes before the rest of the the rest of the assembly goes in. Okay. All right, so are they uh, doing foam insulation here? Yeah, so this stage here uh, now has all of the stringer network installed. That's going to be the place that we can connect and mount all of our cabinetry to and all of our electronics. And uh, they've also already done the spray-in foam insulation. Okay. That gives us really good R value. Um, and they're actually in the process of scraping that all flush so that we have nice surfaces to mount everything to. Yeah. What was the R, the R, the R rating on this thing? It was, it was so... So uh, the R value changes throughout different parts of the truck, but we've got R value of anywhere from R25 or higher. That's high. Yeah. That's extremely high. Okay, so when you put the, 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 the stringers go in, that gives you the ability to have kind of like a, a fake wall, so to speak, that you can run all the wires, all the plumbing, yep. electrical. So our stringers are designed to essentially make what is a round interior surface or curved interior surface into a square, square surface that we can do all of our cabinetry, our wire chases, uh, our plumbing, everything else is a little bit easier to build in a box instead okay. of a curved surface. Okay. Hello, I'm Jonathan. I'm a general lead technician here at Earth Roamer. All right, so we're in the final assemble, uh, assembly area. So are you overseeing like all over this floor here, the whole process? Leading up into the QC process, I do work with the techs on a day-to-day -day basis and help them troubleshoot any issues that come up. Okay, so basically you're, you're, you're looking for any issues that are not solved at that point Correct. or during installation something comes up. Correct. All right. So tell us a little bit about the team of people that you work with. Well, everybody here is extremely talented. And to build the best thing on the road, you have to have the best people with the best talents doing it. So do they all come from an, uh, an automotive background or? Some, yes. Not everybody. Myself, I'm from the marine background. I used to build boats in Florida for Sea Ray. Oh. So okay. It's very similar. It, it, you know, a lot with your electronic components and having yeah. to waterproof them, it absolutely it is. Yeah. What brought you to Earth Roamer? My wife and I lived full time in an RV for seven years. Uh, so before you, that, hey. my dad has been an off grid liver for almost 20 years now. So, off grid and mobile living has been part of my life. Uh, when I came to Colorado, I used to drive by here a lot. And I always thought it would be a really cool thing. So when I saw it come up, I jumped on the, jumped the opportunity the and here I am. Wow. Hello, my name is Richard and uh, I'm the production manager here at Earth Roamer. So Richard, you know, I, I understand that, you know, you've done a lot of things for Earth Roamer before arriving in this position. You that know, as, as a general manager, you are, you have to be knowledgeable about all areas. I try to be. <laughs> so you've actually worked and manage almost every area of Earth Roamer prior to coming to this position. That is accurate. So what brought you to Earth Roamer? It's the lifestyle um, and something new, something different. Um, I had oil field experience before this and I was also uh, in the restoration, uh, fire, water, sewage, mold. Okay. And this was just an opportunity to to do something really neat, something unique. It's a very unique team, a very broad sense of, um, it's a very broad skill set going across here. Young and old, never too old to uh, learn, never too young to teach, and we keep that here. Uh, this team, it's such a well-oiled machine. 
when we run into a problem, these guys are already working on a solution. Very seldom do they come to me with a problem. They always come to me with two or three solutions. Um, and that really, really helps. I've got a great team um, standing behind me. It makes me look good, I'll tell you that. Richard, thank you so much for you your bet. time. You. We appreciate it. You bet, take care. Now the way our assembly floor works is there are multiple phases um, that the trucks are built in and about every six days or so, a uh, truck rolls from phase one into phase two, from okay. phase two into phase three, and all of them are shifting down the line. Okay. So what that means is we are actually delivering a truck uh, somewhere between every six to eight days, uh, because the last one that rolls off the end of the line is rolling right into customer hands. Okay. So um, everything that we're seeing here are these shells that are currently sitting on carts that will roll from phase to phase and each technician is specialized in his phase. So we have the phase three electrician or the phase two woodworker who specializes in his part of the build and he develops those skills over several months learning how to perfect his area. Okay. And then we actually, after people have enough expertise in one area, we will start moving them to other stations and other phases so that we have a lot of cross training going on. What that cross training allows for us to do is essentially develop uh, the technicians into somebody who can almost build one start to finish. They can jump in anywhere, they can float, and they can help in all different parts of the build process. It's also really nice because you get to learn a little bit of everything. Absolutely, and that, yeah, absolutely. You know, and so a lot of these are pre pre done boxes with wiring. Yep. So all the cabinetry was built in our wood shop, right. including all of the framing behind it, and then that is delivered to our electrical department, who are hand building all of their own harnesses, um, and they are assembling all these different components. And a lot of these items are bench built uh, right over in the other corner of this room, uh, so that it's a little bit easier installation, and so that they can make sure that it looks the same every single time. You know, I, we were commenting a little bit earlier uh, when we were visiting, but you know, just the, the, the gauge of some of the wires is massive. Yeah. So we run very powerful systems in these trucks. And one of the reasons for that is that we don't ever want customers to have to rely on external sources of power when they're out camping. So we run everything off of solar and lithium ion batteries. We don't have an onboard generator. Um, but at the same time, we still want customers to be able to run their air conditioning, run their stove, their oven, their microwave. All these at the big same time. Right. We want them to be able to run these okay. big appliances off of the house systems, and all of that is based on lithium ion batteries and a massive solar bank on the roof. So that's why we see large gauge wires all over the truck is because all of these systems are going to be running from those single sources of power and not expected to use like a shore power or a right. generator or some of the other things that limit you to being in a formal campground. I'm Shay Devereaux, I'm the lead for Electrical Earth Roamer. All right, so, and we're in the electrical department. So can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, what, what goes on right here? Yep, so this is our bench build area. It all starts right over here on the tables. We have two bench builders for our LTI model and we have one right now for our SX model. It's gonna be, growing like crazy so i'm sure we'll be adding that bench build uh, process a little bit more so this is th this really helps the 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 process when you're uh finishing up the truck in this stage right oh yeah because a lot of electronics then come in in a box yep ready to mount but it's easier to work on outside the vehicle when you're making these than it is to have them in there yep okay so um you know you have a team that works for you okay tell us a little bit about your team uh unbelievable guys i mean the the background that we have everybody's so different and spread out i mean nobody's worked on an earth roamer before to come get a job here okay so i mean we have guys that were mechanics guys that were wiring up service rooms then we have guys that are doing underwater ip cameras and coral reefs it's kind of spread out so the knowledge we can get from just each guy in our team we're learning well, every day and, and as it's interesting that you mentioned that i mean you're you're taking some very vast backgrounds, but you're looking at it as an advantage oh, yeah. rather than a disadvantage. So, so now this is a, a large area right here. So you're not only in this area, you actually take some of the, the your finished boxes, take them over and help with the install. Yep, and the that's, that's the biggest thing about our bench department is we try to get as much as we possibly can done on this bench because 
as you can see, we're buzzing in here. And yeah, it's, it's right. all about the dance. I mean, we got to be great with wood team, with a general team, with the finish department. And we're all in there and just... Because it just all meshes right in the, that's right it. in time, doesn't it? Yep. To get everything put together. Right in time, but beautifully done. Chase, thank you so much for thank spending you. your time with us. We sure appreciate it. Appreciate you. What an awesome product. Awesome. Thank you. So this phase here is where we're starting to see a lot of the final assembly pieces coming in. Uh, we see cabinet doors being fitted, drawers, drawer fronts being fitted. Um, and then we're starting to do systems testing um, at a little bit more intense and involved level in this phase. Okay. Um, this is also where the cab assembly is coming together. So the pass through, the, uh, all the systems for driving, all of those things are coming together in this phase. Okay. When we move into the next phases, which are currently uh, trucks that are out on test drive at the moment. Okay. These are going to be where we start getting into our quality control phases. So every single truck is tested extensively to make sure all the systems are working and they're not only working by just turning them on and off but they're working as a customer would use them we don't we we don't feel confident uh in delivering a truck until we know we've taken it a little bit off road we know that we've used a lot of these systems we've run the plumbing and all the appliances and everything else um time and time again not only through the phases but at the end here right. so that when a customer takes delivery we can say firmly we know that plumbing system works, the electrical systems work. We have tested all of these things. We have a lot of the time run coffee through the coffee maker. In case the coffee maker were to have any problems, we catch those things before it leaves. All right, so, I mean, it's just really neat. And I think unique that you put that much time into testing. I mean, you're testing it all. You're actually taking it out off-road. You're, you know, testing the plumbing, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's that is a lot of uh, it's a lot of quality control. Yep. Well, we we kept talking about quality throughout our entire walk through the factory, yep. and we want the end user to feel that. So there's there's a lot of quality in the build process. We also want that quality to translate into the end product, and that's where we want to make sure that everything works. We want to make sure that it is exactly how a customer might want it. And um, at the end of the day, we really want to see these trucks being used for what they were designed for. We really want to see them going on extreme adventures. We want to see it taking people to Alaska for the first time on their own power. We want to see people doing things like South America, or we want to see, we want to see amazing travels to places where you don't have to rely necessarily on the grid. But we want to feel confident in telling customers, this is a vehicle that you can trust off-grid. I, well, Dan, thanks for spending uh, a few minutes with us talking Thank about you. service because, um, you know, one of the things when you buy, when you buy an Earth Roamer is, I mean, some seriously personal level service. Correct. So tell us, tell us all about that. So we handle the truck from the time it is sold and keys are handed out to the new owner, basically to the life of the truck, whether it's that owner or the next owner or whatever it is, we try to make sure that customer service is right there with them. If they have any questions, issues, anything like that. We're there to assist, so. Okay, so, you know, the trucks are big. And so, you know, not every garage, let's say you live in a different state, you know, can, can, uh, can, can fit them or have a lift big enough. But you have some workarounds around that, that you work with your customers who, who aren't able to bring them right into your, to your factory. Correct. So tell us a little bit about that. So if the truck is under warranty and we have something we need to fix anywhere else, we will assist them in either we're walking them through how to fix it on their own, um, step by step on FaceTime, anything like that. Or if it needs to get to a shop, we will contact the shop near them, find them ways to do it, uh, assist that shop in letting them know what's coming in, exactly how big it is, how they can assist. Um, a lot of times, um, a, if anyone needs to do fluids or anything like that, we actually don't have lifts in our service department. Truck's big enough to get under there and do a lot of things on their own. So a okay. lot of that's easy to work on. It makes it a little bit easier for, we kind of have to walk the shop through it and let them know right. it's possible. Um, or we can walk that shop through things. If they call us, we send them parts, we send them assistance, anything like that. And did I understand right earlier when we were talking that actually you have somebody, when, when someone calls into Earth Roamer for service, they don't get an answering machine, they don't get a computer, they get a person even after hours. Correct. 
So anytime you call into Earthworm and ask for service, you're going to get one of two people, myself or my service advisor, Curtis. Um, that's going to be pretty much across the board. If there's anything else I need to do where I have a guy on the floor that can assist with something better, I'll get him on the phone or him on FaceTime in a truck. We even might have something going on with the same truck, um, even if it's just regular maintenance. We'll go out to the truck with FaceTime and say, okay, let's look at this. Do you have a dinette? Do you have a bench seat? Let's open this, try this right. button, do that kind of thing. So we'll do that and you're gonna answer us even after hours. I have a uh, after hours hotline for warranty trucks. Okay. Any truck under warranty till 10 o'clock at night in mountain time, okay. um, they can call and ask any questions. Um, I have this issue, I have this question. What does this button do? That kind of thing. Or I uh, will assist that way or um, they'll set us up for the next morning. We'll give them a phone call and get them handled as best we can. Now, um, I, I have a component on my uh, earth rumor that goes out. My, my fridge goes out. Correct. Okay. How do you handle something like that? That's, uh, it, I mean, it's an app, you know, it, it's, it's, the fridge might have been, it's, it's been customized by Earth Roamer. Correct. It has the Earth Roamer touch, but it's not made by Earth Roamer. So do they have to go through the original manufacturer or? Any part that's installed on our vehicle is an Earth Roamer part. Uh -huh. So that part, even if it has its own warranty, I will handle that warranty myself. More than likely, I will figure out a way to get you that part. Yep. Um, I'll get it to the nearest place I can. I will get it um, on a pallet here. And then when you come in, we'll replace it. You don't have to handle Vitrofrigo or a Dometic warranty. I will handle that warranty and get you taken care of because that's an earth rumor warranty um, minus anything Ford under the hood or powertrain. Right. After that, it's an earth rumor. Yes, We're going to take care of it. So even if you went to a, a shop, like you have a list, I believe, of, of shops that have worked on earth rumors before. Right. So you know that they can do it. Um, you'll take the charge. And so the customer just brings it in, has it done, picks it up, and leaves. If it's a warranty, whether it's a service warranty or a production warranty, yeah. um, we'll get them to a shop if we can't get them here or I can't get someone to them. And then we'll take care of the payment and the, the stuff on that side of it. So the customer just has to deal with dropping the truck off with them. And more than likely, I'll be the one calling and paying for it and taking care of it that way. You know, that, that's customer service way up and beyond what we see in the car industry. That's you, our goal. You, um, Dan, tell us a little bit about how you came to Earth Roamer. What's your background? I've been in the automotive industry since I was probably 16. Um, I went to automotive management uh, college. Okay. Um, and then I got through and I worked for, um, I've been to Toyota. I've been through uh, Cummins okay. diesel trucks. Um, and I also worked for Echo Park. Um, so I, I ran that facility for a while. Um, my passion is off-road, off-road, overlanding, that kind of stuff. Yep and it's a little automotive and service. So I kind of decided to mix those together. I actually had a tab in my computer for about three years of this, of Earth Roamer's careers page. And I would refresh it probably every Friday, but it Look was the same across the board. As soon as it came up and popped up as a new pop-up, yeah. I immediately um, came through. Cause I'll drive, I drove this I-25 probably once a week and just saw it, drove past it. But as soon as they were uh, available to hire, I, I jumped it. Jumped the well, I, you know, I know for you, you, I'm sure you feel fortunate that you got the job. You've been here. I think that they were just as fortunate to get you. Thank you, sir. Dan, thanks for spending your time. Thank you very us. much. So, Zach, you know, I, from, from my perspective anyway, that's the walk through the factory, the design, the engineering, the testing, the quality, the craftsmanship, and the capability of the vehicle all lead to what I think is, is you know, has been your goal um, all along. We're not looking for any specific type of customer other than anybody who wants to get way outdoors, off grid, and still be comfortable and still be luxurious. Yeah. You know, this is meant to be the vehicle that enables all of your favorite activities and passions and hobbies. So I think it's the perfect marriage between over luxury camping and overlanding. I would agree. And on that note, I want to first of all thank you for taking your time with us. But you're going to hear Zach and I again tomorrow a little bit because we're going off road tomorrow on the Earth Rover. I mean, if we if we have a truck like this, we got to go play with it a little bit. We have to go play with it. So be sure to check out that link up above and see the Earth Rover. Roaming the Earth. Thanks for watching.